So door knocking. The way we tend to organise door knocking is in small groups. So it's obviously safer to do it in at least in pairs. Uh, most crews are organised as a group of five. Sometimes with one of those, uh, the lead person, um, uh, sort of do, keeping the doing the record keeping. Typically, a door knock begins with a briefing. Uh, where you'll hear about the area that you're going to. We are mostly door knocking areas that some very clever people who know uh, meta data, lots of data, have uh, predicted are likely to be undecided. And that, it's actually pretty good at picking areas where people are more likely to be undecided. Um, and so, of course, you'll encounter a few yes voters, a few no voters, um, but you know, more likely to meet the important undecided voters for. You get a briefing, you get a map, you get a folder, you typically get flyers as well. It's quite common for door knocks to be preceded by a letterboxing uh, and then a door knocking with a slightly different flyer to hand out to people or to letterbox when people are not at home. So it has that benefit of layering the communication. It means that they got one letter box that maybe has spoken to you on the door and if they haven't they've got a second different one in a short period of time go out to an area um, and uh, we have a pretty good idea of the population how long it takes uh, and uh, as I say in groups of five typically usually a couple of people on one side of the street a couple of people on the other side of the street and you tend to leapfrog each other so as you go and you keep in line of sight of each other uh, Partly just to be safe, partly because you don't want to separate, uh, you're more effective in a group. It also has a great impression, uh, and this will happen quite often. Somebody opens their door, you greet them and say hello, and they might see somebody uh, walking across the other side of the street, and they're seeing our presence in their community. I'll cover a few basics like dress. So a lot of people wear the full-on T-shirts. I'm wearing my Yes T-shirt. I like it. I actually think badges are a bit better. Okay, you wear what you're comfortable, but discreet badge says that's where you are, you're, you're yes, so they can see there's a little bit of officialdom in that, but you would normally be door knocking on a weekend where you just wear your usual neat casual clothing, nothing too fancy pants, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, relatable. Most important thing about door knocking is be yourself, relax, smile, uh, and be kind of friendly because no matter who we encounter, whether they're yes, whether they're no, whether they're undecided or you don't know, uh, we want them to feel not threatened by somebody being at their door, not, you know, imposed upon too much. Uh, we want them to be comfortable to both have a conversation if they have the time and interest to do so and to not have one if they want. So really just chill a bit, be yourself, be friendly. How many people here have ever done door knocking like this before? One, two, three, four. Put your hand up if you've never done this sort of thing before. And as you might expect, the vast majority here. Well, those that have done door knocking, you can contradict me if you wish, but overwhelmingly, when you're knocking on somebody's, their own home door, they just tend to be friendly. You know, like you're in face-to-face, -face. Um, it is their home. But most new door knockers are fearful that they're going to get the angry no person or somebody that's got a chainsaw in the basement. You know, it's all going to be a bit more confronting and scary than really it is. Now, I'm not going to pretend that once in a blue moon, uh, you do get somebody that's got some anger management issues. That can happen. But it is actually very rare and I'll encourage you to think of this. If they're angry at somebody they don't know knocking on their door, they got issues in life. And it's nothing to do with you personally. It's probably got nothing to do with the Yes campaign. It's just that, unfortunately, you know, you've caught them in a bad moment or they're just not having a very good life. We need to keep ourselves safe. Um, we want to respect that we're on their property or home. And if they don't wish to converse, that's okay. In some ways, and I'll now talk about no voters. When we pose the question to them, do you realize there's a referendum coming up? And some people will say yes. 
And often at that point, they'll just tell you how they're voting because they've been telling the other people. Um, we might follow up with a question that goes, no, the referendum's going to be on pretty soon. Um, yeah, have you already decided how you'll vote? That particular question, we're not actually asking them how they're voting. We're just asking them, have they made their decision? And um, uh, uh, so uh, what you want to do there is... Um, uh, uh, when it's a no, we're going to end it because people that have already decided their vote are very unlikely to change it. And it's not a good use of your time. Door knocking is very labour intensive. Your best time is used not in conversation really with somebody that's already made up their mind, but to move on. Don't get me wrong, you will find no voters who really do want to have a discussion. They may not want an argument. They may just want a discussion. Um, and that might be tempting to do that because they could be friendly about it. But again, don't do that. Um, it's not a good use of your time. Noel Pearson said it recently. Our no voters, we're going to wrap them in love. And I'll tell you why we're going to wrap them in love. Uh, we're going to wrap them in love because it confuses our opponents and it does not motivate them. But also, we, don't, we want a respectful discussion in the community. Um, and so we're not going to wind them up. We're not going to bite if they seem to want to uh, wind us up. Wish them a good day. Uh, hope they enjoy their weekend. Sorry to have taken up your time. With yes voters, well, in organising when we get one yes, what do we try and get next? We want to get more yeses. Yeah, we do want to get more yeses. And what might be another yes, Rachel, that we would look for from a yes voter? Uh, asking them to talk to their friends or family. Fantastic. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Give them something to do. We also want to reinforce a yes vote. You know, that's great. Um, you know, uh, your vote will really matter in Western Australia. Make them feel important. They are important. This is their time to shine in our democracy. Um, also, we want to educate yes voters. Um, so we need we want them to know that they'll be voting at the usual kind of polling places and in the usual ways, including voting early or by postal vote. Um, it's not like a party political election where you have to write numbers. Uh, you will have to write the word yes. So we not only want a yes voter to say they're voting yes, we want them to know how and when to vote as well, as well as, you know, yeah, talk to other people or they may be interested in being on our email list to sort of hear about opportunities that we provide. So, no voters, short, polite. Yes voters, reinforce it, educate them a bit about how to vote and uh, organise them a bit. Yeah, talk to family and friends, keep up. Good on you. Um, now we come to uh, uh, people that won't say. We're just going to treat people that won't say as uh, uh, end the conversation. They're probably almost certainly decided so just move on with a friendly, have a good weekend. Undecided voters. Uh, I'm looking for somebody to unmute themselves. I just find BFART 100 too fascinating, BFART 100. Could you unmute yourself and read out uh, what you're seeing on the screen? I've got two dogs who are barking, so Fantastic. apologies for that as well. No, that's good. Um, good read out that the Constitution first. to recognise the first people of Australia uh, of Australia uh, by establishing an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice. And my name's Mark. Here's the first lesson in being trained about conversation. You have to say the words out loud. You don't read a piece of paper in your head and feel that you're prepared to have a conversation. You've got to articulate it and you'll sometimes you'll change the words but mostly it's so that you are more comfortable saying those words naturally because you need to come across as yourself with integrity. This, what we know with undecided voters, this and the next statement that I'll put up are often enough to convince them. And with this statement, most people don't know what they're going to be reading on the ballot paper till they go in there. So for an undecided voter, you can preface this with, I've got the actual words that you will read uh, on the ballot paper. 
what about, can I just read this out for you? And most people think, yeah, well, I don't know what I'm going to be seeing on the ballot paper. So you're running like a community service announcement and they're going to appreciate it. So you're getting off onto a good start with that. Plus, for many people, when they do read the question, they're going, well, that's pretty reasonable. You know, so, you know, that's good too. There's also this statement, which we've tested and proves to be fairly effective. And most of our supporters find that it matches with their values as well. Uh, so I'm going to ask Michaela without a family name, if you don't mind unmuting yourself and reading that out loud for us. After over 65,000 years of continuous culture, it's time Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are recognised in our 122-year-old constitution. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people want recognition in a practical form of a say on issues, policies that impact their lives. If I had prompted it, I would have said, hey, Michaela, why don't you read that out, but sound like it sound a bit of clunky, like you're reading it out. Okay, that'd be perfect, because that'll make the point that you need to read these sorts of things out so that when you offer up uh, these kinds of points, to paraphrase or speak in a natural tone. Most undecided voters, it's enough to read out that kind of question that we on the ballot paper, a statement like that that was the, gone, and they'll kind of go, well, I, yeah, sounds pretty good to me, you know? And you'll be able to kind of reinforce that. I hope I and Aboriginal people will be able to count on your vote. But, you know, every now and then you get people that uh, have objections or uh, you feel are not persuaded by uh, just those statements, and it helps to have uh, some more sophisticated persuasive skills. I'm going to mention one very briefly, but we're not going to rehearse that, which is about objections. So it's pretty common for people to, if they're, if you like, the difference between that soft yes and a soft no, a soft no would be somebody that has actually heard a few objections, maybe through social media or in conservative media commentary about, oh, you know, we're introducing race into the Constitution or there's not enough detail. Now, when you hear objections, it's helpful to, I want the first thought to be in your mind this, to persuade somebody, you do not begin a conversation by disagreeing with them. So they might say something like, oh, well, there's not much detail. And you might want to go, there is, I've read all of it, and I know the detail, and you're wrong, there's heaps of it. That ain't going to help. In fact, we ask you to begin when you hear an objection with an affirmation. And by an affirmation, it's not necessarily agreeing with them. It's saying something like, well, I hear what you say, or that's a valid point. I have heard others, um, you know, say something similar. An affirmation is something that is a little bit disarming, is signalling to the person that you're having a conversation with that you're there to converse and listen as well. And it's not... Uh, a combative, uh, I'm right, you're wrong kind of um, exchange. And having done an affirmation, we live in a democracy, different views, or I've heard that said, or yeah, governments have kind of stuffed up things a bit, or we well, give an answer. Um, and, you know, with the detail question, for example, the High Court, when that constitutional change was made, it was a very general change. It didn't have the details in it. That was decided by the parliament later. It's exactly the same process that's proposed here. Uh, the parliament elected by everybody uh, uh, or citizen in Australia uh, will decide the shape of the voice. The constitution provides an assurance that there will be such a, a body, but uh, the detail is decided through that democratic process. And finally, we try and redirect so that we're not reinforcing what is probably a negative way of thinking about this issue in the minds of the people we're conversing with. Uh, and I will in this regard um, point out that a very common negative views about Aboriginal people tends to be highlighting disadvantage, the poverty, poverty of some criminality is a widely held uh, stereotype about Aboriginal people as well. Often even supporters of voice will say, I want to do something about that disadvantage. But by talking about that disadvantage, it actually kind of reinforces it. And it's helpful, more helpful, to think of some of the positive stereotypes that there are about Aboriginal people. For example, strong 
commitment to family relationships, respect for elders, that ancient culture. These are positive framings that are important. I'm putting up here the four Vs as a method of talking about your own, developing your own statement for why, if you like answering the question of why it is you're knocking on the door for this campaign. And a lot of members of the public will have that question in their mind. Why would you do this? And it's good to answer that question. We're suggesting a, what we call a four V statement. So it begins with talking about values. It's followed by a bit of a villain. You know, what, what was a, a cause of problems here? Uh, what does victory uh, for this referendum look like? for me, for us as a community, as well as, of course, for Aboriginal people? And what sort of vision is this helping to advance for the community that we live in? So these four Vs, really only call the four Vs because you're more likely to remember them. Values, villain, victory, vision. Give me a value that most people in Australia you think would agree with. Uh, pop it into the chat, unmute yourself, just name a value that's widely held in Australia. Okay, I would say fairness for all. We all like to think we can have some say in the decisions that are made about us. Yeah, okay, so like democratic values. Yeah. yeah. Uh, decency, generosity. I sometimes like to put in family values, I think, are widely held. Mm -hmm. um, mateship kind of is about that relationships with others that we value. Respect. If we have inclusive values... Um, that can include, of course, Aboriginal people, but but anybody that we might be conversing with is a good starting point for uh, a persuasive statement. In this statement with villains, I kind of just go with, we've got to, if we're a bit honest with ourselves, we've had a bit of a racist history. You don't want to slander an individual or name anybody, but it's also a little bit safe saying it in the past, but it can be, I think, a failure of governments is... Uh, a reasonable villain for some of the issues that community as a whole as well as Aboriginal people face. Victory, what does it look like if this referendum is succeeds? And, you know, uh, a practical say uh, for Aboriginal people on the policies and, and issues that affect them uh, is uh, one of those. I like to say it's a way of drawing a line underneath our racist history so that we can move forward because uh, we're making a positive statement recognising um, the ancient cultures of this land. And finally, a vision. Again, an inclusive, uh, widely held vision that um, in this statement is about everybody experiencing some um, respect and dignity, being more united as a community, and really and until we uh, are... Uh, take positive steps to include Aboriginal and Islander people in Australia. I don't think it's possible to say that we have that. What I want to say about the script is this. It's best if you can form up a pair. So, you know, our um, uh, parent and child uh, duo here, ideal. You know, you can one play one role and talk it out and then and swap around. And if we had more time, I would do that here. But even if you're on your own, take that script Read it out loud. I realise, you know, family members are going to think you, that you're, a, you know, a bit insane talking to yourself. You know, go off into the bathroom. But the simple truth is that until you wrap the, your mouth around those words, you won't um, uh, uh, begin to get comfortable enough talking in a way that's genuine to you. Um, and don't think that you have to read out the script because that won't feel genuine to anybody. There is some points being made there that it's helpful for you to get, if you like, uh, but you can do it in your own words. Um, okay, I'm going to, uh, so if you do need to excuse yourself, by all means, I'm more than happy just to open up with a bit of questions, answer, if there's any points that you would like to make from the presentation, you know, of course, more than welcome. I know there's some experienced door knockers here who might like to add to um, some of the suggestions made. I think um, one of my concerns would be being asked a question that I don't feel confident about answering. doesn't matter what the question is. Um, actually, I know what the answer to that point is this, Louise. We never bullshit. Okay, yeah. so, so if you don't know the answer to the question, you go, I don't know the answer to that question. It's a good question. Um, 
uh, uh, or you know, you can refer them to, and you'll see in the speaking notes, the yes23.com.au page, where there's an enormous number of resources in there that would answer most people's questions. And the good thing about doing that is that you're sending them to a good library of resources that uh, is obviously pro yes, um, and just just be comfortable. You're not expected to be a walking encyclopedia about constitutional law or stuff like that, uh, but you will find on that page under the resources tab a lot of resources there. Once you get the hang of it, it's a walk in a bit of fresh air on a nice day and having a chat with people. Honestly, that is the right mindset to have. You're going for a walk to have a chat. I can assure you that when you go door knocking, and I encourage you to sign up to do a door knock soon, like this weekend, there's several important ones going on in mm. some of the outer suburbs, that you will see, hear, and know that you've been persuasive for undecided voters. Uh, and that's just doubled your number. And then when you add another one, it's tripled. And um, it's a very empowering uh, thing.